Hello. How are you? As some of you may know, it is currently May, which means the art world is currently in the middle of Mermay. Or maybe it's the later end of Mermay. Uh, anyway. I have heard of Mermay, but I've never participated in it before, so this was definitely an interesting experience. Also, I did want to do a single piece, but I couldn't really get a concrete idea in my head, so I said, screw it, and the sketchbook spread was born. But before I get to doing the line art and coloring for this spread, if you're interested in seeing this video and you want to see more content from me, make sure to like and subscribe and claim your free virtual ravioli. Anyway, let's get into it. Also, before we do anything, I want to pour one out for my sketchbook paper, which buckled as I was doing some erasing in the sketching phase. Rip paper, thank you for your service. Now for anyone who doesn't know what Mermaid is, Mermaid is a month-long art challenge centered around maybe the most famous mythical sea creature, mermaids. The name is a combination of Mermaid and May, and the challenge, supposedly, is to draw mermaids using one of the prompts every day for the entire month. However, I have to be honest, I didn't know there were prompts for Mermaid until very recently, like a couple of weeks ago. So when I found out there are prompts, I was like, wait, what? And I've also seen artists on social media post one piece of mermaid art for the month only, so I guess that had a hand in shaping my impressions of mermaid. But as I said, I didn't want to do a single piece because I wanted to do a character concept sort of thing for a number of reasons. This is a very new character that I'm drawing, and I wanted to test the waters with her so I could do a bit of exploration with her personality and character, etc, etc. Hopefully you get what I mean. I did a brief look through the prompts list for this year, and two themes popped out to me in particular. Celestial and horror. This gave me a bunch of ideas that almost immediately popped into my head, maybe because I'm a huge fan of the celestial aesthetic, and if there's a prompt or theme that I like, I go nuts! Instantly. I will admit this spread is more celestial and less horror, but I do have some horror-related ideas in my head that I might explore if I choose to develop this character particularly cosmic horror. What I was thinking was giving her an ability related to the void of deep space. Because honestly, what's scarier than an endless expanse of darkness on the fringes of the universe, am I right? So as I said, this design is heavy on those celestial themes, and to be honest, I kind of came up with this mermaid's design on the fly. She does seem to have some lunar vibes to her, which actually came up as I was drawing the spread. There were things that I added and took away as I was doing the sketch, and there were still some minor elements that I removed by the time I did the line art. Since we're starting the video with the line art, I used a set of Winsor & Newton pigment liners that I've had on me for a while now, ranging in thickness from 0.1mm to 1mm. It is possible to achieve differing line weights with the same liner, and my 0.8mm liner does allow for that a little more than the others, I think, but I like having all five on me when I'm doing traditional line art. As I was doing the line art, there were multiple screw-ups that I made. I think I'm like 90% convinced at this point that my hands work faster than my brain, but it is what it is. Originally, I was going to have the mermaid's head fins be more opaque, but I had already inked the back of her head before I could get to the fins. The biggest problem with traditional line art is that there is no Command Z button to undo your mistakes like digital art, so the best thing you can do is adapt and work around those mistakes, which is what I ultimately did. After, like, a 30 second long existential crisis. There are certain areas that I went over a second time to make the lines thicker, while going in with the 0.1mm liner for any thinner lines like the highlights in the mermaid's hair and other places where thicker lines wouldn't really work. Man, she really needs a name, doesn't she? I feel like calling her the mermaid is gonna get old. Maybe something moon-related because of her motifs, I don't know yet. Aside from the line art, there are also areas that I wanted to block out entirely in black, particularly her void space energy, so I used a Faber-Castell brush pen since it would be a hassle if I used my regular pigment liners. If something is more convenient, you should probably use it. it saves you a lot of time. Once all my line art was done, I went in with a kneaded eraser to erase all the pencil sketches, and this time being extra careful not to make the paper buckle again like I did the first time. After all of that was said and done, it was time to once again harness the power of my funny pencil grip, and the magic of choosing color schemes, to get to coloring the spread. I had an idea in my head of what I wanted the colors to be, and originally it was going to be more limited and more monochromatic, but I ended up adding colors as I went along, and decided to give some elements of her design more vibrant colors. I checked the inspiration website of all time, Pinterest, for some inspiration regarding the mermaid celestial theme and also what kind of sea creature I was going to base her on. And I decided before sketching that I wanted to base her on the betta fish. 
I actually used to have a couple of them myself when I was a kid, and they're just... Their tails are so majestic. So graceful. Uh, anyway. I found a picture of a bluish-pink betta fish, and in my head I was like, yes, that's it. That's the one. As I said, I didn't want this spread to be in full color, save for a few places, like her eyes and her fins and tail. The latter two is where I used the inspiration from the fish I saw on Pinterest. Praise be to Pinterest. So back to the topic, for the coloring, I used a combination of Copics, or Copics, whatever you want to call them, and a set of Ahuhu pastel markers. Honestly, it felt amazing getting a chance to use these markers, and I really should do more traditional art if it means I get an excuse to use them. And because my markers tend to bleed through the paper, which honestly might be because of the paper, I busted out Old Reliable, the paper towel, and put it underneath the page I was coloring on. So I started with the eyes, which I used a brighter blue for, and I also used them for the stars on her necklace thing. The metallic details I colored with a light and warmer gray, at least warmer in comparison to the hair, which I used a light bluish gray for, and I also used a light peach color for the ends of her hair and some of the highlights in her braid. For the shadows, I used a more vibrant lavender for the hair as well as the eyes. Then using the same peach color I used for the ends of her hair, I colored the tail and the fins on the sides of her head where the ears would go on a human. Then again, her head fins are very visible on the screen, why am I talking about this? Unfortunately, my peach beige marker, the one I used as the base color for the tail, was acting up, and the broad nib was practically almost dry. I did use it anyway to see what the colors look like with that peculiar textural effect. I'm not sure if I would do it again, but one thing is certain. If college era me saw current me doing that, she'd have an aneurysm! Anyhow, I then went over the peach color with two pink markers for the shading before using the vibrant blue I used for her eyes to add details to the fins and the scales. Then I colored her shirt with a number of gray tones, I made the bodice darker gray with lighter accents, and I made her sleeves and the scarf-looking things a lighter cool shade of gray with a darker gradient towards the bottom. And as you'll see by the end, I added a bunch of black speckles and stars to further give her that celestial feel. The last major thing I did before adding the finishing touches was make most of her arms this dark gray, almost black shade. I'm not yet sure if they're gloves or if it's some deep space kind of darkness going up almost to her shoulders. Maybe if I choose to explore this character some more, I'll figure it out. Afterward, I went in with a regular white pen to differentiate the two areas where the black colors were touching so her arm would stand out against that space sphere thingy she's holding. While I'm thinking about it, one really has to beg the question of where a mermaid with space powers would live. The ocean like most mermaids, or traveling the bounds of space itself? But I guess that's another thing for the drawing board now, isn't it? Also, I won't lie, a mermaid in space would low-key be hilarious. Sea creature in space. To finish off the spread, I wanted to put some text in the blank corner on the left-hand side of the spread. It's not something I normally do, but this time it was a need. I did make a mistake with the first M, and immediately I was like, This was a mistake! But there is a way to fix just about everything, sort of. So I took a white acrylic paint pen along with some white acrylic gouache to cover up the heinous mistake I made. And then I touched it up with a blue marker. I think this is the first double page spread that I've done, and I actually had a lot of fun with it, despite me stumbling in several places. This, as I said, was also my first time participating in Mermaid, and I might do it again next year. Probably to do a sun-themed counterpart to the spread and this character design, or I might just look at the prompt list again. Either way, that's going to do it for this video. If you liked this video and you want more art-related content from me, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I can also be found elsewhere on the internet, so make sure to check out the links in the description. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of this time-lapse.